Plugin of the week is the Plugin Alliance Brainworks BX Console N. Uh, the music in this example is by Tyler Boone at tylerboonemusic.com, and uh, the label is Coast Records at coast-records.com. Uh, okay, so the BXN is an update to the BX console. So if you uh, already have that, uh, then it will look surprisingly familiar. In fact, uh, this is the BX console here. This is the BX console N. And you can see they just, you know, uh, in a quick glance, they look exactly the same. A couple of added features in here. One is the THD for the total harmonic distortion. And on the uh, tolerance modeling technology, the TMT technology, they added in a feature which is now part of the uh, console E and BX console G. And this is the random channel mode, allowing you to either take the existing channel and select random ones or do it across all of them, which changes uh, randomly to kind of make everyone a different uh, console type. Or not a different console type, but a different console channel strip. The basic idea of the TMT modeling is that they go in and they model, went in and modeled uh, all the tolerances or figured out what the tolerances were for all the components that were part of the channel strip. So in a console like this, there may be just like thousands or, well, probably not thousands, but hundreds of caps and resistors and all kinds of stuff. So depending on the console design, there's a certain tolerance to all of those components. And that variance makes it so that every module sounds slightly different from the other one. And I think that's what really sets apart the uh, BX console models now, e.g. and now N, as well as the original BX console, is that each console has a slight variation to it. And if you take advantage of that technology, like in analog mode, it'll make these two different channels. If I put it in digital mode, it'll make them both identical, which is what you get with most channel strip modelings. Over the course of an entire mix, though, it makes a difference. So right now, the way I have this set up is all set up to be the same thing. And then I'm going to flip it so just you can hear the differences there from complete um, in digital, where everything is like the identical channel, to how much, and just so you could uh, experience how much it opens up when you switch it between uh, the different uh, channels. So the BXN is a modeling of the VXS console, the Neve VXS console. This is a late 90s console that was the end of the V series and it was kind of part of the transition going into uh, the 88R and 88RS consoles that followed in the early 2000s. The V series consoles go all the way back to the mid 80s and there was a whole series of adaptations and variations of the console, modifications of the console, additional features added in. And so this is kind of the best of all of that. And also a lot of technology that ended up translating. If, you, if you've worked on the 88RS, you'll notice that a lot of things are very similar. Um, but what Plugin Alliance has done here is they've added in some uh, additional features, which is really great. So uh, just like the BX console, um, you have a high pass, low pass filter here, but on the original console, it only goes down to 7.5K, so this is true to the original, um, which is not very far. So a divide by three switch allows you to bring that down uh, closer to, you know, like 2K or 2.5K, uh, whatever that divided by three is. And then you have a times three here on the low frequency or low cut filter. So instead of going to 315, it's closer to 1K. So that gives you some extended range on the filters, which is very cool. They have a, a, a pull function. So you can actually click on here or double click on the knob and that will kind of push pull any function. It has a push pull and there's a few of them that do that. So this is at the beginning of the chain. Immediately following it is the EQ. So I'll skip over to the EQ. So the EQ um, starts out as, uh, should start out as pre-dynamic or post-dynamic, excuse me, but if you wanted it to be pre-dynamic, you would make it there. So actually, I'm sorry, I'll go to the uh, dynamic section first, because in the signal flow, you would have the filters and then the dynamic section. So what you have is a gate. The gate can be placed into the circuit here, and you have a limiter compressor, which is in the circuit here. When you see this arrow, what this does is it links the compressor on the two channels. So what ends up happening is uh, it, it makes it on a stereo unit, so it doesn't link it to the next uh, module over on the next channel. It stays within this, so whether you're in stereo or 5.1 or 7.1, uh, it will link all of the side chains. So what happens is they will all compress and react equally. Uh, that's the, the basic idea. If you unlink them, say you have something that's very stereo, then you can apply the compression so the compression will kick in sort of left-right and stay independent on the left and right, and sometimes that actually gives you a better spread. Um, so on the limiter compressor, you have a makeup gain. Uh, you have a uh, threshold 
here. Uh, the threshold, if you pull or double click on this, it will subtract 20 dB. So instead of going down to minus 10, it'll go down to minus 30. So that'll give you an extended range if it's not going low enough. Um, you have a pull for fast attack on the ratio knob. So when you uh, bring in the, when you bring in the ratio, you notice that most of the ratio numbers here are, and it gives you the most broad array of um, of variance between one to one and five to one, and that's really the premium area. When you go beyond that, it goes all the way up to ninety eight to one. So you're going you know pretty pretty heavy into limiting on that end. But most of it, you get a lot of variation as you start to use. The console more what you'll find is that the difference between you know three to one and you know three point two to one ends up being a difference that is noticeable and that's really true to the original um, hardware and it helps to shape the overall characteristics of the sound of the compression in particular the release characteristic. Speaking of which, you actually have a uh, release knob that's down here. So this gives you a release from 30 milliseconds all the way up to 3 seconds. And it also has a secondary release. So the secondary release uh, gives you sort of a secondary threshold. What happens there is that when the signal falls below that secondary threshold, then um, uh, what will end up happening is that the recovery will then uh, go exponentially instead of linearly like it does when you set this. So it cr gives you the ability to sec set a second stage there. And so the numbers go, you know, from 20, to, you know, uh, 20 by default or 10 to 60. And uh, so effectively where it's at right now, it doesn't really do much of anything. But it gives you that ability to kind of control pumping and breathing movement and stuff like that. Um so with all of these basic settings, there's a couple of added features. It's a high-pass filter, uh, so you can filter off lower, lower frequencies for triggering um, of the um, actual uh, compression itself. There's a mix wet-dry control here, so that'll go 100% uh, wet down to 0%, so that allows you to put in some excessive heavy compression and then parallel it right inside the channel strip. So no other channel strips that do that other than the BX uh, channel strips. Um, so you have, and then you also have a gate. All right, so that, that kind of takes the limiter compressor section. You could pop that in and out. Um, when you work with the gate, this puts the gate in and out. Uh, there's an invert mode, which is kind of an interesting thing. So it acts uh, inverted. So you hear the signal that would be gated instead of the other way around. And sometimes you can create kind of cool effects with this. It can also um, create ducking effects and stuff like that. Um, then there's a key which allows you to access. So on the actual console itself, it has an external key which you can patch into, which patches into the gate. So that gives you the ability to uh, run the external key into the gate signal. Um, now, there's a threshold here, again with the minus 30, so that, or, or the minus, uh, it's minus 20 on the compressor, but minus 30 here, so that allows you to set the threshold. And then there's hysteresis control. This is like having a second uh, um, threshold. So you can have an open threshold and a closed threshold. So what this does is it adds on to the, uh, this threshold here. So if this is at zero, uh, what they call an expansion mode, then you have a singular threshold and this sets the threshold. If you set this up, what it does is it adds to the open threshold and makes this the closed threshold. So you may have to adjust this after adjusting that. And setting that variance can sometimes help you to make more musical uh, decisions in terms of things like if you have a tom that hits hard and sustains longer, it will keep the gate open longer um, because that lower threshold, it won't go below it um, as quickly, right? So it'll hold, but if the tom is hit softer, it will still trigger or open, but it'll close faster because it'll pass through the lower threshold faster. And that's just like one example of one way to use it. You also have a range control. This makes fast and slow attack. Uh, for or the gate, and then you have a range. You can see that the expander uh, gain reduction is shown over here. The compressor gain reduction is shown over here. So you could see that. And uh, then you have the release uh, control, which is from uh, 30 milliseconds all the way up to 3 milliseconds, just like the compressor. As far as the attack times, I didn't mention this. On the fast attack, that's, uh, that's actually 0.3 milliseconds. So it's actually pretty fast. I'm sorry, 0.1 milliseconds and uh, the slow attack is one millisecond. So that's actually, it's a pretty fast attack, but it's a very musical attack. Um, sometimes the attack time in analog components is kind of confusing because you can have a faster attack, but it's the shape of the attack that actually determines what it sounds like. So sometimes it's not nearly as aggressive as a millisecond 
hard knee on a digital uh, a compressor. So keep that in mind. Um, as far as the equalization circuit goes, the EQ goes in and out. You can make it pre-dynamic if you want to send the EQ into the compressor gate section. Uh, you can also feed it into the side chain. Uh, so if you feed this, you know, uh, now into the side chain, then this would uh, allow you to control what's actually keying the uh, compression. So uh, we have that. Uh, you have a high frequency shelf. You can make it a bell curve by taking the shelving off, and then this will um, narrow the Q uh, by half. So this will narrow the width of the overall Q, so you can have a sharper boost or attenuation if you like. If you have both of them in. Uh, essentially it becomes a shelf and it ignores this so that doesn't affect the cue or anything else in any way. You have a, a mid-band EQ. An interesting thing here that it takes a little bit of getting used to and this is this is exactly like the Neve. All the Neve components they have the numbers or the frequencies upside down. Uh, the idea being if you're sitting at the console you could actually see the numbers whereas if they're over the top they're behind the knob. That was the basic thinking behind it and then you have normal uh, over the top boost and attenuation and a Q, same type of thing here for the low mid band, which goes from 190 up to 2K. So you have a pretty broad range of frequencies that you have available to you. On the low end, same type of thing as the, as the high frequency section. Uh, you have a shelf, it defaults as a shelf, and then you can make it into a parametric and a narrow parametric. So if you're familiar with, this, this is an extension of uh, the, you know, going back to the 1081 and uh, um, 31102 EQs, which had those high Q switches in, which narrowed the Q. And that's where exactly where that comes from as part of the Neve tradition. Um, over here, you have an input gain. So this just sets your overall input gain plus minus. Uh, the virtual gain, this is actually noise. So the console itself exhibits, all analog components exhibit a certain amount of noise. And so the cumulative effect of that noise is configured here. So this is exactly where it would be if you were using the console and then you could actually take that away to infinity or you can enhance it and add, add it if you wanted to. So that's a, a knob there. And then this is like an overdrive function. So if you push the THD, you can have uh, like essentially extremely clean by turning it off. Uh, but as you filter up, it, it goes up to like minus 60 as a default. Uh, so that's kind of like a nice analog warmth. And if you want to drive some stuff, you could push it up to minus 30. And that actually pushes more gain in. So it's the equivalent of kind of driving more signal into the channel than it would normally be able to handle. Uh, I mentioned the analog digital switch. So that uh, changes up uh, um, this. And then we have the random channel function. And then uh, down to the bottom, you have as a final wrap up, you have uh, the fader uh, which just controls the overall output gain. So uh, let's have a listen. Now, if you uh, are familiar, if you've already seen the videos on this that I've shot on the console G and console E, you kind of got a, a bit of a comprehensive understanding of what those two uh, consoles meant. The console, the E console was originally from the 70s and uh, in the mid 80s, uh, the G series console came out. This is a late 90s console. So a lot of stuff, probably the SSL equivalent would be uh, J or K series console. J series console came out in the mid 90s. So that would probably be the sister to this and the K series just basically fixed all the problems of the J series, but basically sounds the same. Um, let's take a listen and uh, we'll just uh, play a little bit of audio. I'll AB this in and out. Uh, this is essentially doing nothing. That was just for demonstration. And uh, let's see where we're at. So I think you can hear just from like the overall example how it has like a warmth and a richness that you would expect from a Neve, has an accuracy, you know, and solidity in the mid-range, 
very cool sounding. I'm going to do a little comparison between this, the G, and the E, just so you can kind of get an overall thing. But I wanted to, to show just a couple of things. One was on the bass here. Uh, what I did was I drove in a bit of, uh, of harmonic distortion. So just... And it's perfect for stuff like that, especially like low-end instruments or if you have 808s or anything like that where you want to give it, you know, add some harmonics out there to ripple it so that uh, you get something in the mids that actually helps you to image the low-end better so it kind of syncs. And, uh, and that's like a classic way to do it. It's also a cool thing, like if you wanted to take, uh, for example, a snare drum. Uh, it's here, so I have a, a snare here and here, the snare top and bottom. Uh, I didn't do it here, but you could also add a little bit of edge. I'll start with the, with the bottom mic. Right, so it just it gives a, like a bit more character. In this case, it's not a, a dramatic example. Sometimes uh, we used to take a bottom snare mic, drive it into like a mic preamp, and so it would really distort and just gate it. And then if it was really awful sounding, you could just make it uh, you know really distorted so it had more of an edge to it. And that this can add. Uh, you know, uh, a bit of character. You could also do this like on vocals and things like that. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you here that uh, in with this, because the compressor is actually quite flexible overall, uh, you can do lots of, uh, you know, things with it, you know, in, in terms of uh, sonically, like right here on the bass, for example, I have just kind of a, a, a very low ratio, like 1.1 to 1, and I have my uh, threshold pulled down really low, some makeup gain. And I got a bit of, you know, with a fast attack uh, and a fast release, kind of a, a compression. That's, it's kind of like an averaging kind of compression. It kind of dips down low into the level and kind of creates some movement in the mid-range. And usually can bring out a little bit of life. Just wanted to A-B that, just show you what that's all about. So let me go here and solo the bass. And especially for something like that, it can add like some stability. I also did a similar thing with the vocal, although there's loads of different things you could do with the vocal here. Uh, let's just uh, skip over to the verse here. So Every time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. Similar idea here with the light ratio here. 1.2 to 1. Every time stand next to you, oh, I begin to tremble and shake. And it just adds like a nice uh, solidity to the sound. If I can't have you, baby, my heart will surely break. You can see the game reduction, you know, down there just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea. Overall, though, it's really great. It's like a functional compression, um, like for the drums, essentially uh, what I'm doing here. I started to, to move the ratio around, and this is an important thing to so see you can kind of get a a flavor uh, for how it affects the sound. Uh, so let me just see here. Um, I'll just take uh, just the snare top here for a second. Just... Every time stand next to you, oh, I begin to try. Every time stand... Get my shortcut straight here. That's limiting. You notice that the the um, that the game reduction doesn't change 
overly, you know, like as you sweep through the different ratios and you have a lot of variance in there, you can get, you know, a, a bit of a tighter sound. It just gives it like a little bit more density as you go up higher. If I go to a fast attack, obviously this, this will, uh, you know, completely change because you're dealing with a 0.1 millisecond attack. So it's going to be far more aggressive. And in that case, I could do... run a parallel and and that's you know like another way to uh, uh to use this to kind of create you know a more aggressive approach to to uh you know to the sound uh and you know if you don't like that you can just kind of undo stuff i'm just going to put it back uh, essentially where it was just so we can have this set up exactly the way it was in the mix control so uh, anyway just a couple things to show you that it's very flexible the EQ is incredibly musical uh, you can really use it um, on really any instrument and it will sound great um, I think there are you know, in general, just my experience working on like SSL consoles, particularly like a G console or even an E console, when you get to things like vocals, you're probably not going to be EQing your vocal uh, with that. But with this EQ, you can really do that and it will sound really clean and musical. It's uh, and in that respect where the SSL has perhaps like perhaps more edge, you know, uh, and, you know, kind of a Brit grittiness. Um, that's, that's a bit more driven in, in the mids and upper mids. Um, this actually has like a warmth and character that kind of pulls back a bit more to, uh, you know, the more vintage Neves, like in the 80 series Neves, but has a bit more of a hi-fi quality and a lot more flexibility in terms of the sweepable frequencies. So it's a very powerful EQ that you can really use musically on just about anything. So what I want you to listen to though, because just having the the uh, Neve console here doesn't necessarily work in all situations, and you might get more of a character that you like out of an E or a G console. So I wanted to do a comparison here just so I can kind of demonstrate a little bit of what the differences are. So let's listen to a little bit of this um, with uh, the Neve first, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of flip back and forth and go through the E and the G. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Actually, one other thing that I forgot to do, I wanted to uh, uh, pop this in and uh, I'm going to uh, hit OK here. This is going to randomize all of the channels. So I wanted you to hear that effect. Every time I sit next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time I sit next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. I like the very first one I did. So if you notice there, um, there's a, a difference in terms of the way that the sound opened up. I forgot to do that actually before uh, moving on because the other E and G, I also did that at the end and you hear that difference between them. All right, so now let's do the comparison here. So let's listen to this now opened up and then we'll compare it to the E and the G. Every time I sit next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time I sit next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. If I can't have you, baby, my heart will surely Okay, so uh, let's that's the E. Let's go uh, now to the E series console, and uh, so I'll just call that up so you can uh, hear that is now. I didn't match up all the EQs and compression settings and all of that because there's only so far you can go. The attack and release setting, uh, the attack settings 
on the SSL are different. It's a VCA compressor, so there's different uh, issues in terms of sonically it's different. Uh, not all the frequencies match up the same or filter shapes and stuff like that. I tried to more or less try to get a similar vibe between them so that you could hear the differences. So this is the E-Series desk. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. If I can't have you, baby, my heart will surely Okay, and now let's uh, listen to the G series console. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. If I can't have you, baby, my heart will surely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of go through them quickly because you're probably thinking, oh, I want to hear this in, in more rapid succession. So let's uh, go through it and I'll just kind of go through them one at a time, back and forth. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. Every time sitting next to you all, I begin to tremble and shake. If I can't have you, baby, my heart will surely break. I see you walking down the street, oh, short skirt and nothing but bare knees. I see you walking down the street, oh, short skirt and up to me, girl, I'd take you home, you never sleep. So I think you can hear that it's like a, you know, a characteristic difference between each of them. And obviously, if within any one of those, it could tweak the mix better to pull this back or forth you know the guitars will jump out maybe a little bit more with one than the other you could you really hear it like the vocals are clearer um and the basic idea here of this is that um in demonstrating this it's not to try to match it or try to do a shootout and say oh e is better than g is better than n because for one particular mix and one particular approach that you're going for you may find that the neve happens to work better um, or you may find that the G is kind of a better vibe uh, or way to work. But uh, whatever way you go, if you haven't uh, checked out this knee version, uh, this emulation of the VXS, it's really, uh, really, really amazing. So easy to work with. And uh, it's a little tricky. You have to kind of read through the manual and get a good understand <clears throat> understanding of the compression. And uh, once you kind of use it for a little bit and kind of get used to the flow of that, it's actually really easy to use and you'll find that it's amazing. The TMT is a game changer overall uh, in terms of uh, everything else. And this console is just about as, as musical as you can be, but also has the grit and the THD is like a huge addition uh, to it. So that, that makes it that much better. So really great one. Um, nice collection here. Hoping uh, to sit, continue to see more letters showing up, maybe an A for an API or a J or a K for a, a K series console. And uh, who else, who else uh, knows what's out there? All right, that's it. Uh, very cool. Uh, plugin of the week, Plugin Alliance Brainworks BX console and music by Tyler Boone at tylerboonmusic.com and Coast Records is a record label, coast-records.com.